POC Network here with an unboxing, this time coming from the company Aris, which is a manufacturer of modems for cable and DSL providers. And uh, you might be familiar with them in terms of uh, a different name. It used to say Motorola going across the top here. Uh, that's because uh, Aris and Mo Motorola used to be partners in terms of the modem market. And uh, as of recently, Google bought out Motorola and said, get rid of Aris. We don't want them anymore. Get rid of the relationship. So now everything's branded directly by Aris. But thankfully, by now, everybody's familiar with the surfboard modem. This specifically what we're looking at today, this is the SB6190 modem. And what's special about this is that this is the flagship model that's, that Aris has the, to offer. And what it is, is just like every other DOCSIS uh, 3.1 modem, uh, this one, uh, you know, the, the, uh, this, this, uh, what makes this different from the rest is the fact that it has uh, many, many, many more download channels than the other ones. Usually you have downstream and upstream channels. And uh, it's kind of like, uh, sort of, kind of, when you think about it in terms of the um, pipeline on a processor or, or maybe uh, how many cores it has, eight core, six core, four core. Uh, so the concept is kind of similar when it comes to, to modems in terms of how many, how many lanes in that freeway do you have going both ways. And the more you have, the cleaner the traffic, the th more traffic you can fit in the mix, you know, and, you know, noise, uh, signal to noise ratio, everything else is improved on, you know, um, uh, upgraded hardware, uh, which is also important, helps move things along quicker without creating a lot of heat, killing a lot of power and or just, you know, uh, slowing things down. So that aside, this is again, this is the SB6190 model by Aris. And uh, what this is, is it's a 32 channel uh, downstream modem with eight channels up. Uh, so currently you have multiple different types. Uh, you have um, 4 and 4, 8 and 4, 16 and 8, uh, 24 and 8, and the granddaddy of them all, 32 and 8, uh, which should be 32 and 12 in my opinion, but mm, they went with 8. But that's because most of the cable providers and DSL providers do not provide more than uh, relatively around 10 to 20 megabit upload anyways. Uh, they like to limit you there to prevent you from running file servers and and stuff like that, ooh. So uh, the benefit on this is really on the downstream more than the upstream. This is gonna give you more, of a, you know, with eight channels upstream, it's more than enough for what you need. But for downstream, this is, you know, it's it's splitting it up and multiplying how much bandwidth can be pushed through that pipeline into this modem uh, and then back into your network, which is a big plus because most of today's routers and, and uh, home network switches and everything else are all gigabit. Uh, no more 10, 100, now you got the gigabit. I mean, you've had gigabit for a while, but the important thing is, is uh, before you know what's the point? Unless you're transferring files between computers on your com on your network, you're not actually making use of that. So that's where this comes into play. Now you can make use of it, assuming, of course. Oh wait, your ISP supports that kind of bandwidth. Uh, we're getting there eventually, hopefully, as long as these ISPs stop milking us and uh, not providing enough competition to each other. Uh, spend more money, get out there, balls out, and let's build some pipeline with all this fiber. Let's get gigabit internet. But, you know, until now, it's, you know, even here at, uh, at the office, we get, I think, is 300 megabits per second, which is perfect for this. Uh, some of the older modems maxed out about 150. Now they, you know, the, the model from down from this is 600 and something, you know, so as long as you're within the last three models, this um, being the top, you're pretty good for future upgrades until they do roll out the gigabit. But when they do, you're going to want this. So I'm just going to keep sitting here and saying so and adding to this. I'm just kidding. I like to talk a lot. So let's get to the point. With the, what we're doing here today is we're opening it up and we're going to see what's inside. What do we get? What do we get inside the box? So we pop it open. We already, we already popped the seal on this. So it's easy to go open for us. We have a power adapter. It's directly to the back of the modem and then the other end to the wall. We have an Ethernet cable. Now, if you're replacing a modem you may already have, then uh, or that you already have, then you probably already have one of these. So, hey, great, now you have a new one. Those things are a dime a dozen anyway, so it's no big deal. It's not uh, worth going, oh, this sells the modem right there. You have some documentation, having trouble? Call us. We're really interested in knowing about it. Uh, then you have, oh, look at that, good, good shot. Uh, you have some safety and regulatory information, you know, it's like, oh, here's a small print they force us to give you, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's off to the side. You have some uh, easy instructions with a quick start guide here that just kind of tells you the obvious, you know, hey, plug in the modem to the wall, plug the modem into your computer or a router, and turn it on. Done! 
All right, throw that to the side. And now we have the modem, and that's it. So power cable, ethernet cable, some documentation, and the modem, and silicone packets. I'll throw that away. And here we go, this is the modem. This is the SB6190 modem. 32 down, uh, 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 downstream channels and eight upstream. And it maxes out at 1.4 gigabits per second. Of course, that's theoretical. Uh, the one point, uh, or the, uh, let's see, what was it? The 6120, I believe it was, was supposed to max out at 150, but really it, it only gave everybody about 120, 130. So we'll keep, it, we'll keep to the term of theoretically. This maxes out at 1.4 gigabits. We'll know for sure once the internet service providers actually make it that fast. Um, uh, for us to splurge in, but till then, uh, this is great if you do have Premier Internet, if you have uh, Ultimate Connection or anything like that, th th those are tiers from Cox Cable, that's an example, but anything else that goes above 100 megabits per second, uh, if you want to future-proof yourself or make the best out of that connection, this is an ideal solution. Of course, you know, until you do get past 600 megabits per second, the model down from this is a lot cheaper. Uh, you can pretty much pick up something you need for $99. This retails right now for $150. It's not a requirement until they get closer to a gig. But hey, again, if you want to future-proof yourself, again, this is the best way to start because this is a uh, monster compared to everything else on the market. Now, that being said, that can all change in the given months. I'd say it's probably more realistically about a year from now. Uh, you'll start seeing DOCSIS 3.1 modems rolling out into the market. Um, the s uh, specifications and standards are set and they're ready to go. It's just all the, you know, they're waiting on all the cable providers and internet providers to roll out their fiber networks to be able to even bother with those speeds. Because DOCSIS 3.1 is going to blow these away, the DOCSIS 1. Or, excuse me, 3.0 modems. Right now, this is already entering DOCSIS 3.1 speeds, the entry levels that you're going to see when they do roll out, because they're going to, it's the same thing, it's going to be about a gig, you know, to start off with maybe a gig and a half, you know, so this will still survive the entry of the DOCSIS 3.1 into the market. Also, that being said, uh, with 3.1 modems coming out uh, relatively around this time next year, uh, more than likely, uh, you probably also won't see the speeds coming in near that just yet, because you do, once again, have to wait for the providers to actually roll out their 3.1 networks to support the modems fully. Now, the 3.1 modems will be backwards compatible, so you could wait and get one of those, or you can get this and milk this for the next four years or so. Um, that's up to you. Uh, the DOCSIS 3.1 modems will probably be a little bit more expensive than these are. Uh, it's just an assumption, since it'll be new tech. Uh, and uh, if you if really break it down, ISPs like to roll out their networks really, 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 really slowly. And you probably won't see DOCSIS 3.1 amazing, awesome, oh my gosh, that's super fast speeds until, I'd say, 2018 to 2020. So it's up to you again. If you want to wait that long and upgrade to something great, then wait. Uh, it might be more expensive. It might not. Who knows? It's not here yet. But until then, we have this goes up to 1.4 gigabits, it'll get you there, it'll get you as close as possible, if not even past that little starting line, and uh, prolong that uh, time period to where you're going to have to buy a 3.1. So for now, this is a beast, this is a flagship product, we highly recommend it, we'll probably publish a review coming up shortly, uh, if you want to check out at pocinc.net forward slash blog, or pocnetwork.net forward slash blog, and see what our authors have to say, because more than likely they're probably going to want to play with this and test it out and and uh, really stress test it to the point of uh, at least what we're capable of based on our own connection here. Thanks for watching. If you want to stay on top of all the latest and greatest and or at least the gadgets we cover, remember to subscribe right here. Subscription button. Click it. You're going to want to. There's lots of videos, interviews, previews, all sorts of stuff. Button. Click it.